Welcome everybody to the uh, second Librarians of the Citadel episode recap for uh, Game of Thrones Season 7. Today we're talking about Episode 2, Stormborn. So uh, we kind of picked up right where we left off, right? They're all in the war room on Dragonstone. There was a big storm raging outside. And uh, they were kind of planning their offensive. And it, we had a dramatic couple of moments there between Daenerys and Varys. So what did everybody think of... Uh, how Daenerys handled Varys in that scene. I loved it. Yeah. I think it really captured how she's going to be as a ruler and how she's going to verge from the Mad King. Yeah. I, I liked it because I saw a parallel to how Jon had treated in last, at the last episode. He pardoned the uh, Karstops and it was the Umbers, right? Mm -hmm. That um, were the ones who had rose up with the Boltons against the Starks. And so I thought... That's interesting that they have, they have kind of like a similar approach to how you treat traitors. Mm -hmm. um, but I didn't know if I took Varys at his word that he's on the side of the people because I felt like, well, <laughs> he hasn't really proven that to be true yeah. in previous episodes. I mean, he was plotting the overtake of uh, Robert's rule in, um, in the very first season. You know, they were plotting to put Viserys on the throne and Viserys would have been a horrible king, which they must have known ahead of time, and um, in the meantime, yes, Robert was an indifferent king, he didn't really care to be king, but he wasn't really actively hurting the people either, right. so I thought that was kind of an interesting position that he took, and maybe he just felt like he needed something to say in order oh, yeah. to, yeah, yeah, because it was also, well, I, I started thinking about it, I was like, well, he is the... Um, Intelligence Committee for King's Land, like he's the intelligence agency for King's Landing and Westeros, like with his little birds and his spies. So he must have known that Varys was planning to blow up King's Landing and mm -hmm. kill all those people in there. And mm -hmm. as far as we know, he didn't do anything to try to stand in the way of that. The only person who stopped that was was Jamie. Otherwise, all the people in the capital would have been would have been the Reeds like yeah. the stuff the last season. So mm -hmm. that I was like, well, that's kind of interesting. And then. Um, it, it was interesting, though, because um, there's never been any examination of his motivation before that I remember. Right, right. right. And right. He's, always, he's such a meddler, he always had, you know, was behind the scenes with the plots. He and Littlefinger. Oh, Littlefinger is, it's pretty clear his motivations, right. and mm -hmm. Barry's, it's always been just sort of... We, yeah, we don't you, know what his intention is, what does he yeah, want? So, right, and, that, and that's something that... In the books, a lot of people have been, you know, speculated about for a long time now. Like, what is Varys up to? Like, what is his deal? Is he just like a Targaryen loyalist? Like, what is his deal? Because, he, I mean, to me, if you were in favor of the people, you wanted to be the leader of the people, the best way to do that would have been to get rid of Cersei and let Tommen and Marjorie rule, because they would have been great. <laughs> yeah, or get rid of a monarchy altogether. <laughs> right. You know, like, so, so it's, it's, to me, like, I, I feel like this is all kind of... You know, because Danny is probably going to be a good queen, but she's had kind of a rocky start, like when she liberated all those slaves and had zero plan of what to do with them after that. She's like, you're all liberated, and now you can just live your lives. And I don't know. I don't know if she'll be a good queen. I, I don't. I, that's iffy for me, shaky for me, especially since she seems so easily, like, swayed either way, like, right afterwards when she's speaking with Lana, and she's saying... She goes, you know, you're be a dragon. So she's saying that to her and trying to kind of tell her, well, Tyrion's a clever man. It, you know, so I don't know if she really has a plan herself or if she's just kind of going with yeah, whatever. And, and she kind of has this, I, and I never really felt this way until this season, but I'm like, Danny's kind of a little bit entitled. She thinks, like, I was born to rule the Seven Kingdoms, and therefore I should have it. Oh, but in a course. nation of, like, when you're in a world where nations conquer other nations, like, no, your family was taken off the throne, so you yeah. you, you really aren't in line anymore. You know, <laughs> it's not, like, that's not how succession works. It's not yours, you know, but um, she felt, like, immediately, like, yeah, Jon Snow can come here and I'll talk to him, but he's got to bend the knee. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, I was like, hmm. Tyrion didn't look too happy about that either. No, you know, and of all the um, of all the great houses and all the potential allies, like Jon Snow is a natural fit. You don't have to ask him for his loyalty. They hate the Lannisters mm -hmm. too. They don't want Cersei to be in charge of anything. Even with the fight against the White Walkers, 
it's better for Cersei not to be involved. Right, Jon Snow's not going after anything because it's his birthright. No. He's doing it out of his sense of, of honor and, and um, you know, just what's good for the realm, what's good for the people. Do you, do you see a romance coming between Jon Snow and, and his auntie? I, yeah. Honestly, I think we're supposed to kind of, yeah, but we're supposed to kind of anticipate that, right? I feel like if they're... I, I, I felt like that's been like what we've been kind right. of like yeah, promised. Yeah. I think, oh, like, but to me, I'm like, I don't know if Kit Harrington and Amelia Clark are going to have any chemistry. And I just don't they're see how cold. They're, yeah, they're both like really cold. Like, Amelia is so stone faced. Like, I was watching a, um, before the episode started, I watched an interview with her online. And when she's just speaking as her normal self, her face is like so expressive. Her eyebrows are moving up and down. She's so like, and then when you see her as a narrator, she's like, well, she was in Me Before You, and she had a whole different persona. Yeah, uh, that smile just... Anyway. Yeah, <laughs> but so, um, but yeah, I think it'll be interesting to see, you know, we got the little glimpse at the end of the episode for the what's on the next episode of her sitting in the throne and him walking in, and it was like, I really don't know what to expect from the two of them. Because I doubt it's going to be like, boom, instant attraction, because we have, what, 11 more episodes to go. <laughs> I feel like they probably want to build that up a little bit, right. right? I really hope that's not what happens. I don't know what to think. You know, because part of me is like, well, who else would be, a, if we had like an endgame romance of some kind of level, who else would be a good fit for Jon Snow? Do you, do you think Game of Thrones needs an endgame romance? I don't romance? think that, I think, it's not well, that kind of show, I think that they will think. have Danny marry somebody, though. And in... Well, that's why she left her lover behind. Yeah, yeah. And, and and the books they do like the prophecies in the books do kind of hint that the person that she's going to be marrying is Jon Snow. But that doesn't mean they have to love each other or even like each other, right? right. Oh, I don't think to do with it. Right, and that brings up another good moment when I, the you know the the Red Queen, the, the witch is there, and she says she gives her the prophecy, and she, oh, that prophecy spelled me. She said. Prophecies, you know, whatever she said about how there are strange right. things, and so basically saying it doesn't have to be about you, you know, this is the prophecy. But that was another one of those entitled moments where Daenerys immediately assumes that, that prophecy is yeah. about me. Oh, oh, that's a gender, a gender neutral oh, a pronoun. It must be about me. <laughs> but yeah, how did you like seeing? Um, we're gonna start seeing Danny interacting with these characters from Westeros that she's never interacted with before. So we saw her with. Alaria Sands, we saw her with Melisandre, we saw her with Elena Tyrell. So it's kind of been interesting to see these new dynamics with a character who's been so far away from all the action for so long, coming and meeting these key players. It's kind of fun. Yeah. I'm yeah. awaiting her interaction with Cersei. I wonder if she will ever interact with Cersei. Yeah, think so? Too. You think yeah. there'll have to be like a showdown of the Queens? Yes. I do hear her part, though, just at me. Oh, I don't know. Uh, as long as she's a dragon. Well, she needs that, to need that advice. That's yeah. what my, my dad says, um, you know, the only reason Daenerys ever wins anything is because she has dragons. <laughs> <laughs> so, I think it would be kind of interesting, one-on-one -on -one with Cersei, if you're going to have them being like kind of like a showdown, like even with like a cutting comments. Right, about <laughs> Nobody's better than Princess Cersei. Cersei. That's what I'm saying. Cersei would just rip her apart. It's a battle of wits or something. Yeah, yeah. I mean, we've never seen Danny like have a, a particularly, even Sansa had like even last last episode, Ooh, yeah. she had some, some witty responses to Littlefinger, but we've never seen Daenerys mm -hmm. kind of have those kind of mm -hmm. interactions. Um, but I thought it was good that Melisandre came there and warned that the long night was coming so that like okay now hopefully Melisandre can explain to her what that means so she knows that hey yeah you maybe want to play your your game of of a uh, conquer and whatnot but there's a bigger threat that you need to be prepared for so don't go wasting your doth rack <laughs> <In your, laughs> um so then we immediately saw in Winterfell that John had received the message from Danny, and I did like that he actually turned to Sansa and was like, well, you know Tyrion better than all of us, so what do you think? Because it shows that he's, you know, kind of taking her a little bit more seriously, looking to her for insight, so I liked that. Um, and I like that Sansa had only really good things to say about Tyrion, you know, because 
I, I actually kind of was, you know, in, in back in like, what was it, season two or season three, where they were married, I think it was season three, when they got married, I was like, mm. they can only like trust each other and join forces and just be together. Like that would be like, you know, they don't have to fall in love, but if they could just be friends and but it seemed like such a missed mm. opportunity for the both of them. Was saying, she was too young. young. She was yeah. too young. She hadn't yeah. seen enough horrible stuff. <laughs> she didn't know who the good guys were. Right, right. Um, and I think Davos was speaking truthfully. They have no chance against the White Walkers and the Army of the Dead without allies. And who better to ally with than a woman with three dragons? Plenty of white dragons. And dragon glass. And dragon glass. Yeah, that's really important too. Um, so I thought, I thought the scene with Cersei when she was trying to get all the lords on her side, where she was using like basically coming out as. Uh, you know, applying to their xenophobic <laughs> tendencies. <laughs> These foreigners are going to come to your land. They're going to take your women. They're going <laughs> to burn your fields. <laughs> yeah, it did sound familiar. It, yeah, it, it did. It did. And it was like, it was, um, but it was like all they, um, <laughs> I, it was uh, like basically that was all she had. She wasn't like, I'm a better queen. You know, she was just like, basically, at least I'm not bringing foreigners to your shore. <laughs> That was like her whole argument. <laughs> was that the only time we saw Cersei? No, we saw Cersei, Cersei another Cersei. time. The other time we saw Cersei was when she went into the dungeons with oh, the oh, oh, that's right. That was cool. That was cool, but I didn't like it. It was oh, like, don't course. shoot the dragon skull and don't make a weapon to kill dragons. <laughs> I don't know, I love Cersei, so. <laughs> I mean, they had to do something, though, because right now it's like. Danny would be too powerful. She could roll, steamroll over everything, and the only thing that's keeping her from doing that is, is Tyrion's reminder that she doesn't want to be queen of the ashes, right? Mm -hmm. But she could have already won by now, really. She could have just gone in immediately and taken them all out. Because then, like Tyrion said, killed tens of thousands of people, and yeah. you know. And, I mean, yeah, that's not a good way if you're going, I guess, if you're a politician, which essentially all these people are, <laughs> it's probably not good to start with killing, like, tens of thousands of your people, right? That's but also, happened. after the end of the episode, she, she might regret that a bit, that yes. she didn't do that. I think she will. She lost, essentially, two allies from that attack. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And it took out her, her sea, most of her sea force. Yeah. Yeah, and she, she lost, um, who knows what's going to happen with Dorne. Because yeah. Ilaria Sand is being taken to Cersei, and I doubt that she will ever see Dorne again because the next episode is called The Queen's Justice, and I think we all know what kind of justice Cersei may have in mind for the woman who killed her daughter. Right. Or could it be uh, uh, Daenerys' justice about what just happened, too? I mean, I think it is possible the title has two meanings, right. but I, I think I think we uh, saw Euron marching triumphantly into King's Landing, and he's mm. going to be delivering the gift he promised, yeah. and, I, and I think... You know, Cersei doesn't care about Yara. Yara didn't do anything to her, but Illyria's hand killed her daughter. So, right. at the very beginning, of, before the episode even started, great editing team, right? How they did that <laughs> um, previously on. And they had that one clip of Euron going on, what does a woman, best way to a woman's heart, through a gift, and immediately went to her. Mm -hmm. So, in that editing. so Yeah, they give you yeah. little clues if you're looking for them. They do. Right. Yeah. And she comes. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I think I think we are going to see more Cersei next se next episode sh for sure. She did only have I think the two scenes this episode. Although I thought it was kind of interesting to see uh, Jamie trying to talk to um, Tarly mm -hmm. Randall Tarly after and trying to convince him. You know, and, and Jamie's trying to kind of grow into this role as the statesman. But the entire time I was watching, I was like, he's really no Tywin, no Tyrion. I mean, he's no. doing his best, but he's also promising this guy, like, oh, but maybe you'll be made warden of the South. And that's not really something he has the power to give. Right. So, and, you know, it could be that Cersei likes somebody else, and then you, you went ahead and promised Randall Tarly. And right. so it, it was just kind of... Uh, I don't think he's quite grown into that role yet. Um, he was probably a little bit more effective last year when they were taking River Run. There was kind of a hint to in that conversation of another rift between he and um, Cersei. Yeah, but I can't remember exactly Did what the line was. Like well, well he, so he said, "I know you don't like my sister," yeah. so he, he acknowledged that she's not well liked. Mm -hmm. yeah. Which it, it, I felt like um, we kind of got a sense of that. I felt in the scene with Arya and Hot Pie. 
because we had last last episode we had the Lannister soldiers who were talking about oh we came to King's Landing and we wanted to see the historical sites and they were all gone you know and they didn't say oh it was Cersei or you know because they're not going to because they're right. Lannister bannermen they're not going to say but when you go into the end scene with Hot Pie and then you have the two two men in the background who are talking about and Daenerys has dragons and <laughs> then Hot Pie comes to Arya and he's like. Yeah, and they, somebody blew up the step, and she's immediately like, well, Cersei, Cersei would do that. So the small folk are already talking among themselves about what's happening in King's Landing, and I don't think that's a very good sign for Cersei. Um, they're already, yeah. if they're already talking about it, that's probably not a, good, not a good sign. And it sounded to me like when the men are sitting in the back there all impressive about the fact, you know, all impressed by the fact that Daenerys has three dragons. We have a question. Sure. Um, have you already discussed the disgust of the gray scale scene? Or the no, we haven't discussed that yet, but we will right now. So, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, so we, um, we, yeah, we had uh, Samuel Tarley doing his best to save Jorah Mormont out of, uh, you know, because of Sam's respect for for Jorah's father, which I thought was was. A nice, you know, Samuel is like the nicest guy in this entire show. <laughs> and, um, and he was trying really hard to convince the Archmaester. So Sam keeps breaking rules, though, huh? Because now he's doing this forbidden treatment. He went into the restricted section of the library. Well, I, I thought of it like this, too. Sam's seen a lot, yeah. you know? So he couldn't go back to just being like a sheep that he's, you know, he came there for a reason. He's seen a lot. And he knows something. He knows... You know, he saw Jon Snow, and he saw his honor and his bravery, so I think that really affected him. And I, it, it made sense to me that he actually would break the rules and, and try to do something. They, they did drag that scene out, though. They really <sighs> I, my well, I, I think I think it felt like it really wasn't that long, because when we were watching it this morning to, to get ready for the recap, it was actually pretty short. But it was so gross. <laughs> it felt like much, much longer. But... Um, it was hilarious though too when when I was watching it last night with my boyfriend we were cracking up the whole time because uh -huh. Sam was like so so polite I'm, I'm very sorry please you, you can't, <laughs> you can't <laughs> please please just lie down cut your no, skin off again <laughs> shh please <laughs> I was thinking like man if they could have just gotten some Boltons in there that would have been done <laughs> the master flares <laughs> Um, but yeah, it was a very. It shows, I think, Jorah's determination to live that he was just well, sick to go through that. Right. Yeah. 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 Cool. Yeah. I couldn't yeah. watch. I had yeah. my eyes. Well, closed. either way, it was going to be painful. Right. Yeah. It was no matter what happened. It was going to be rough. So that at least this gives him hope, even though it's an experimental, um, experimental sort of procedure. But it was a kind of a disgusting segue of Sam going with the knife to oh. the crusty oh. skin. Right? <laughs> 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 And now, well, now there's that risk, right? That's not going to contract the disease. I thought about that too. Yeah, it, did, did he put himself like? At, and I was waiting for him to cut in and for like pus to spurt in his face or something. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, so something that would mean that he definitely got grace. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like the so that it wouldn't be ambiguous. Like, but now he knows. Oh, my sister watching with her in the segment said you should have cut off your arm, right? And she screamed at the TV. She's like, I've been saying that for two years. <laughs> <laughs> So, so now that Sam knows that if for if he did contract it to just cut off yes, that, yes. just just get right. rid of it immediately, right? And what um, about the wolves? She says the is wolves. That, yeah. That, uh, so that was you know. So let, yeah, let's talk about Arya in general for a moment here because the whole series, I mean, the whole season this year started with her committing mass murder, right? right. She took out like fifty frays in one foul swoop. So that was the very first scene, Ooh. and then. Every scene after that has been her reclaiming parts of her humanity or connecting to right. her past. And right. I find that very interesting. A very interesting journey that they, they kind of set her on. I, I loved that she ran into Hot Pie. Right. And yeah. he said, was, you look pretty. Yeah, and he said, I can't believe oh. I ever thought you were a boy. You're actually you're pretty. And he was giving her news of her brother, and she was in disbelief of what right. happened in yeah. Winterfell. And it just changed her whole disposition it, as soon as she found out. Yeah. yeah, she became more vulnerable, like yeah. visibly more vulnerable. Great acting by Maisie. Okay. Right. Um, but yeah, she she is going on this whole like different sort of transformation back to herself, which is kind of, it was, it's, it's nice to watch. You know, our favorite little mass murderer. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and the burning question is, 
question is, will she be reunited with her family at Well, last? I thought that was, like, just, like, of course they would do this to us. They'd send her on the track <laughs> to Winterfell and John Snow would be headed to Dragon Snow the very next yeah. season. So that, that reminds me of she is going to see Sansa. And remember in the first trailer that we had for the season, uh, Sansa's words at the end, which we made into a button, brand new buttons if people are interested, she says that Father used to say that when the winds of winter come, the lone wolf dies, but the pack survives. And at the time, we thought, theorized that most people were theorizing she was speaking to John. After the scene with Nymeria, I believe she was speaking to Arya. Because Nymeria is with the pack now. And I think it's yeah. very interesting how the wolves are supposed to be manifestations of the, their owners, right? right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and how divergent have Nymeria and Arya's paths been? Nymeria has a place in the world. Nymeria has a pack. Nymeria has responsibility. Arya has nothing. She has no one. Well, I was reading an article this morning um, about the last thing she said to Nymeria, and she was like, that's not you. Uh, and it talked about in season one when uh, Ned Stark had said to her some, something along the same lines, that that's not you, right. or... Right, that she's going to stray. Yeah, right. Instead of right from the direction. She's talking to me, that lady... And how the wolf kind of went through that same thing, and how they are connected in that same way. Right. How they, I read a similar thing too about mm -hmm. how they were, you know, they're both wild. They're both, you know, so now they have to go live on their own wild paths. They can't yeah. be mm -hmm. together. Yeah. But, but like you said, now she's with her pack. So I think Ari's going to go back, see her sister at least. Hopefully, will be there. I'm just so nervous that Littlefinger's going to do something. Uh, I, I mean, yeah. part of me was like. John, do not. I mean, I was glad he threatened him and all, but I was like, do not leave your them. sister alone with this man. <laughs> <laughs> well, he needs, he needs his army. And I, yeah, and I think that, um, you know, part of when Sansa was objecting to John going and she said, you're abandoning your, your throne, you're abandoning your people, part of me finished that sentence with, you're abandoning me. Because mm -hmm. I think Sansa's still probably pretty vulnerable. Like, she's, she's a much stronger person. But she's a much stronger person now under the protection of her brother. And him going away, yeah. I think, really would probably make her feel a little bit more like she's lost in the world. I wonder if Brianna's going to have a greater role now. Because that was so. the person whose reaction we saw besides little fingers when John was, was mm -hmm. leaving. Mm -hmm. um, and it was interesting, sort of, who was looking at who. But they yeah. showed Brianna twice. I hope she kills Littlefinger. I really hope she does. <laughs> I, I don't want them to. Really, yeah, I mean, I don't want him to die, though, without them finding out, or without Sansa in particular finding out what role Littlefinger played in season one with her father being captured by the Lannisters. Mm -hmm. I think to have him die without them discovering that he betrayed her father. Well, Arya's coming. But I don't think Arya knows, right? Well, I wonder if she'll put two and two. I mean, maybe, maybe she I does. Mean, I mean, remember yeah. way back in season one, Arya saw was it supposed to be Varys and Littlefinger plotting? It was um, Illyrio and, oh, okay. and Varys. But she didn't know. She didn't know. Yeah. No, so she might not. But I don't think Arya would be taken in by Littlefinger. Or I just Arya's. No. Well, there was Absolutely. also that cover shoot that she did for a magazine at the beginning of the season, and she had his dagger. Oh, um, really? yeah. The Valyrian so, yeah, steel dagger? The one, the one that they uh, lingered on in the yeah. last episode. The one that was sent to kill Bran. Yeah. Season, okay. And she, she had it on her. On Interesting. Her so. I wonder why they would let such a spoilery right? uh, yeah. uh, prop be put on the cover. It was on the cover of the TV Guide magazine, right? I don't remember yeah. what Chinese it was. But. Ooh, Interesting. So yeah. we, should see, we should search that out and maybe put it in the comments on here. Um, yeah, that's interesting. Mm -hmm. So, um, getting back to Cersei just for a moment, because when she went down into the um, in the dungeons, and she, it's, she mentioned that what, that was where Robert used to bring his um, horse. I was like, wow, she's still focused on this. <laughs> like, she's still bitter about this. And I just want to talk about like how I really hope that her hair grows quickly. <laughs> oh, yeah. Like this has no style. Yeah. I saw a comedian online this morning refer to it as the "I would like to speak to your manager" haircut. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, mm. <laughs> it's just a reminder of her shame. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, but yeah, Elena, Elena Tyrell, you are a dragon. Be a dragon. I think that 
we maybe will see more dragon-like behavior from Cersei in the future, but I don't know what that entails. Does it mean sweeping with fire across the sea or bending into their will? I don't know. Yeah. It's catchy, but (laughs) what does it mean in actuality? Well, her gameplay has to change now, Daenerys, so after our ending scene last night, which was just awful. We have a question from Jen Jones in Plymouth and Manamet. Janine is interested in the relationship between Daenerys and Jon Snow. She speculates that they may be siblings. We are tuned in at Manamet. Um, they are not siblings. They are uh, aunt and, and uh, nephew. So uh, the family tree of the Targaryens is that uh, the Mad King fathered Rhaegar, uh, Viserys, and Daenerys. Those are his three children in order. And Rhaegar fathered Jon Snow with Lyanna Stark. So Daenerys is technically Jon Snow's aunt. But, but we, nobody knows that. Nobody knows um, that. We, don't, we still don't know how Jon Snow is going to find out. I, I do think that Bran is headed to Winterfell. Yeah. 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 Bran's on yeah. Bran's yeah. Bran's yeah. Division. Yeah. Yeah. Bran's yeah. our division. That's how yes. we yes. know. Because yeah. yeah. we saw young Ned Stark, who is just adorable. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so... So we don't know what kind of relationship. I mean, if Targaryens can marry brother and sister throughout generations, I see no reason why an aunt can marry her nephew. But I, what will I wonder if the reveal happens though, and they find out that Jon is a secret Targaryen, what will be Daenerys' reaction? Will she feel threatened, or will she be like, "Oh my God, there's another"? Because she was the last one. Will she be like, "There's another one"? You know. So it'll be at this know. point, I might see her feeling threatened. Yes, because, because she's, she's getting so, more and more entitled. Yeah, yeah, more and more entitled, more and more focused on. How she's the one to rule, and that prophecy that might be about Jon yeah. Snow that Melisandre yeah. gave. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that no, might be a she might be the prince. Right. Right. And Melisandre, I think she, that I mean, yeah. she's yeah, she's I mean, a whole she, other yeah. topic of conversation. But I think my feeling is that Melisandre thinks it's Jon. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's the impression I get too. That she she <laughs> believes yeah. it's Jon and. Um, she was kind of being vague with Daenerys on purpose as like, you know, oh, well, maybe it's you, but I think she right. well, well, Wasn't it her, though, that pointed out that it's uh, non-specific? No, Misandre yeah, pointed that out. Okay, I thought it was like both of them. Yeah, it was like, uh, yeah, I think, I think Misa- uh, Melisandre probably knew, but yeah. as, as translator, Misandre kind of corrected Daenerys and was like, no, this, you know, it's not mm-hmm. gender specific, so... Um, so, speaking of misandry, though, we had quite a long ro- romance scene between her and Grey Worm, which was kind of nice. I feel like um, it, it, it did go on a little long for me, but I and, and I was kind of preoccupied with the fact that neither one of them shut the door. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, so I was like sure. guys, guys, you're completely nude in front of this open door. <laughs> um, but, but um, so that, that was problematic for me. It really took me out the moment. I was like, this is sweet, guys. But again, the door. The door. <laughs> um, and uh, I'm glad I wasn't the only one who noticed that. It so, raised a lot of questions. It did raise a lot of questions. Um, logistics. Yes. Um, okay. um, but we don't need to get into that on, on this particular discussion. Um, but there was also, uh, my feeling was, it was another scene. I felt like we had two episodes in a row where they showed scenes that were like reminding us that the people involved in this are people, right? Mm-hmm. Because it was a it was a romantic sex scene, which we right. almost never right. get in Game of Thrones. Mm-hmm. Like we've had Rob and Talisa and John and Egret. Those are the only two other romantic scenes I can think of. The other ones have just been about like lust or power. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And so so it was, and it, they lingered, and it was really tender, you know, like Grey Worm being so vulnerable. It was really sweet and very tender. And I felt like they are just trying to remind us that the humanity involved. Like, with this with the, the Lannister men last episode, there was just another reminder that there are real people involved in this conflict, and some of them are really nice and really genuine, and a lot of them are probably going to die. Tyrion. Like, <laughs> Tyrion and Shay, that's another one. Oh, yeah. Their relationship was... Although she was not so romantic towards the end. Like, no, yeah. but it's the way it started, though. The way it started, yeah, was kind of... But um, 
Yeah, but it's, it's it, in all of the seven seasons we've had so far, it's pretty rare. Right. Um, right. But yeah, and then um, the humanity again, you know, having hot pie be so sweet to Arya and, and oh, calling the memories oh. and friends don't pay. But at the end, he says, "Oh, I'm like you. I'm a survivor." And I just thought, "Oh, hot pie, oh, you're gonna oh. die. <laughs> <laughs> this, this inn is gonna be seized or set on fire." Let's hope not. Yeah. So um, don't get attached. We had a we had an excellent battle scene though at the end with, oh. with the uh, and I think that was our first battle scene on sea since the Battle of the Blackwater I season two. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And first major deaths we've had this season besides yeah. obviously Arya, but that was all the nameless phrase. Yeah, you know, we don't know. That, I mean, the Sand Snakes were. Um, you know, I wasn't sad to see them die, <laughs> um, but it was kind of like oh, they died kind of. Not easily, but because they were fighting and they had yeah, to, you know. Right. But it was, it was like, wow, that that they, just happened. They, yeah. were, they were expendable. They were yeah. expendable. They were red shirts, right? Yeah. <laughs> um, but they, uh, you know, the capture of Alaria Sands, and yeah, you know, I think um, so. Next episode, if we if we have bets placed on whose deaths are coming next, I think maybe Alaria Sands is a, a pretty good contender. Or Yara, okay. yeah, I, I don't think Yara's any unless he's going to keep him there, uh, keep Yara as bait to lure Theon. So, why do we think Theon jumped? Because I have like three uh, different possibilities. I think that he's he's, he's cowardice, yeah, yeah. or so that he could warn Danny and they could plot to get Yara back, or to just live to fight another day because he knew that if he went to his uncle, he'd be taken out and probably his sister. And, but Yara was captured. He didn't kill Yara right away, which leads me to believe that Euron may have other plans. Like torture. Torture. Well, <laughs> and that's what um, I, that's what I was thinking because here we have Euron is being kind of cast in the books and, and it looks like in the show as kind of our third act villain. Mm -hmm. So our first act was Joffrey, second was Ramsay Bolton, third act is Euron. Now compared to age wise. Joffrey and Ramsay are quite a bit younger than we are on Greyjoy. You're on Greyjoy's been around the world and seen some things. So we don't know yet what he's capable of. We don't know if he's as sadistic oh, and sick awesome. as Ramsay or, or Joffrey. We don't know that yet. But he has to be a pretty big bad guy if he's going to be the final human mm -hmm. super villain. Well, I mean, we got a hint of that the first episode when I. Uh, you know, saying about Jamie, how it was beautiful watching him. But he's talking about his king being yeah. slaughtered. Right, right, yeah, he's killing his own people, yeah. Right, right. Yeah, and he, I mean, he killed his, the first time we saw Yaron, he was throwing his brother off the <laughs> side of a bridge. But we don't, haven't seen, like, you know, Joffrey liked to hurt people. Ramsay liked to hurt people. I don't know if we've seen, we don't know yet if, if Euron has that proclivity towards. He likes to see them die at least. Yeah, he likes to see them die at least. So that'll be interesting. Um, and Alaria is clearly the gift to Cersei. I don't know. And uh, you know, who knows who holds Dorne now? And will Dorne rise up to avenge the Sand Snakes and, and Alaria, or will Dorne just fall in line with Cersei? You know, so that's a wild card now. Mm -hmm. um, so, what was everybody's favorite moment, Linda? Oh. Um. Uh, I'm not sure. We'll come back to you. We'll okay. start <laughs> either either uh, Aria with Hot Pie and her learning about, you know, that her brother has a winter fell. That was really, I, I really enjoyed that scene. Or um, actually Jon Snow when leaving Winterfell in Sansa's hands and, and seeing that interaction. And, you know, Sansa, like seeing that okay, my brother really trusts me, and, and I can do this, I can handle this, but let's just hope little finger doesn't get in the way. Those two scenes I really yeah. enjoyed. Yeah, but for me, again, I think, and it was the same as last week, the Arya stuff. Mm -hmm. I, I love these scenes where she's mm -hmm. she's coming back to being Arya Stark of Winterfell, and I love seeing Nymeria, um, mm -hmm. and she was beautiful wolf, she was huge, and it made me wonder, though, I was like, where's Ghost? <laughs> because yeah. as far as we know, Ghost is still alive, he should be at Winterfell with Jon, but we haven't had a single single Ghost sighting yet, he wasn't going with Jon to uh, right. Dragonstone, so maybe maybe he's there with Sansa, and maybe Sansa will keep him close, I think that would uh, work out well for her if she kept Ghost by her side while Jon was gone, so. Um, Arya and Maria, I think. Mm -hmm. I, I really, 
Arya has been such a prevalent character this season. I think I could be wrong with this, but more so than most seasons. Mm -hmm. And we're really, we're following her um, path a lot, and her coming back to the Starks. And I think this season has a lot in store for her. But I am also nervous about her. She has risked a lot so far with the people that she has um, murdered. She just murdered an entire family, mm -hmm. so that might catch up with her. But yeah, I'm interested to see where she goes from here. Um, well, I, ditto. I, I was going to say the Arya scenes, but um, I agree. So I agree with what everyone said. Um, just for a short, brief scene that I was like, yes, was um, Oleana telling Daenerys to be a dragon. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. That was great. I, I love Oleana. I, I, I mean, I hope she like makes it through everything. Like, she's awesome. <laughs> yeah. Um, I would have to say the scenes with Samuel Tarley because here's a person with uh, integrity, so it was a, a little lighter than all the deaths. Um, but I just think he's really going to grow into to be really something. All right, I guess that that wraps up our discussion of. Uh, Episode 7.2, Stormborn. You can join us next week. The Librarians of the Citadel will be here again at 9 a.m. to discuss episode 7.3, The Queen's Justice. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, everyone. <laughs>